Hey guys, it's Bailey Wiki, and it's uh, let's see, December of 2024. And uh, what I'm going to show you today is a, a few modules from Ripper. Uh, Ripper is a developer, a very prolific developer, maybe the most prolific developer in the Foundry third-party module development ecosystem. And uh, I've been using Ripper stuff for a long time. You can subscribe to Ripper and get access not only to uh, all the free stuff, which anybody can do, but you can get all these premium modules that Ripper has available. And you can even get into early access stuff that I really enjoy. I'm going to show you three modules today. Two of them are premium. One of them is moving from early access as of this month into just regular supporter access. So y'all can try it at uh, at Ripper's normal support tier. Uh, but one of them is free and it's a really powerful one. And so I'll start with the two premium ones and then I will uh, jump into the, the, the third one, which is an audio based one that I think you guys will really want to know about. So starting off with the, the premium ones, the first one I want to talk about is Hexplorer. So Hexplorer, there are other, um, you know, hex based Explorer maps out there or, uh, modules. Uh, this one is from Ripper, right? So you get like whatever your, your world map is. And if you've seen some things from, uh, from Foundry, as far as Ember goes and the exploration of a, of a world map, it, it, it's kind of like that takes some inspiration from that. But Ripper kind of built this uh, specifically around just being system agnostic. And what it does is it lets you define regions uh, within your map. And those regions can then do things like a region can, uh, you know, if we double click on this particular hex here, we can have it reveal things. Uh, first of all, it can like use up your speed faster or slower, right? So it might be more difficult terrain moving through a forest. Um, there you can throw up tooltips and journal entries. Um, if a player, if that, if that hex is revealed, meaning a player can just see it, you can automatically la uh, launch certain activities from that, right? Which might include like, you know, maybe exposing this, the city tile. This is just a tile. Um, so maybe you can expose it, make that visible for the first time. And you can do a bunch of other things, uh, with it as well. And then if a player lands on the, uh, the tile, they can have things happen. So for example, you can roll a roll table. So maybe weather changes or something else happens. Um, I can't show you this fully now because I'm still working on it, but I just wanted to expose you to it. But I've got, you know, as of this month, I've got these new um, diorama scenes. So I can, I can build a ton of scenes really fast, right? So like, I've got like, you know, ruins and get these windows out of the way. So I've got like ruins, I've got you know, a river crossing, I've got a campsite. Basically I've got a ton and the ability to make a, a lot of, uh, a lot of maps quickly. And so I was like, wouldn't it be cool if I could navigate through these regions and automatically on certain tiles, roll a roll table and have it surface one of those scenes. Right. And if I roll on this roll table, it will, uh, you know, it'll give me a card here. So these are things that I can automate now through Hexplorer. So I recommend if you're interested in it, come check it out. It's relatively straightforward how you set it up. If you want, I can do a deep dive video on it. If enough of you uh, want to see it, enough of you use it. Um, but I would check that out because I think it's, I think it's super interesting. Uh, that is a premium one. This is one that's coming from early access to regular supporter access this month. So you, uh, a lot of you will be able to check it out. And I do recommend subscribing to Ripper for a month and getting a feel for all the premium things that, that he has available because there really is a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, the second one, and this is also premium, uh, this is called Skill Tree. And Skill Tree is super interesting. I was talking to Ripper about this. I'm like, well, what are people using Skill Tree for? Because I had my own ideas of, of what they might use it for. And let me just show you here really quick. So if you go into configure settings, this is actually how you access Skill Tree. And you go all the way down to Skill Tree, you can see you can you can create some skill trees here. And so I created one uh, called base upgrade. So I, I thought, hey, you know, it'd be kind of cool if my players had a base, um, a base of operations and that base could be upgraded over time. Right. So this idea that I have a base that starts with this it's sort of a place to rest. Right. And maybe that gives uh, a certain benefit, like, um, you know, maybe it, it lets my players get a full night's sleep and and that's great, right? So that might cost some skill points 
to actually be able to unlock this base. And then you have other things hanging off of it. And it's relatively easy to create these, right? So any kind of object, whether it's a thing or a spell or a feat or whatever, you can just draw them or drag them directly onto this, uh, this panel. And then you can kind of move them around and you can create relationships. So if I drag this into there, I just broke that relationship. If I drag it in again, I recreate that relationship. And you can have relationships be kind of many to one, um, all sorts of different ways of unlocking things, right? So uh, let me just show you what my skill tree looks like for a particular player. So like, let's open up a player and we find this little skill tree button up here at the top. And when we click it as a GM, we can assign points out, right? So maybe I wanna give my party or particular player points towards upgrading their base. And they say, great, all right, well, I can spend three on making it a place to rest. So now I can rest there and get a full night's sleep. But then maybe I want to uh, increase the security of my base, right? And so I can pump points into that. And once it's pumped, I can, I can take advantage of that, uh, you know, of that item. Maybe I want to build an armory. Maybe I want to have staff, right? So I have to kind of start with a caretaker and then I can upgrade to having guards. So maybe I want to have some kind of crafting, right? Which eventually turns into equipment enchantment. Like we could imagine, and there's systems out there for upgrading bases. This is a system that lets you do that. And it lets you do that, not just for your own homebrew stuff, which is probably 90% of what people use uh, skill tree for but also like if you're running a game system in foundry that's not heavily supported right so it's not like a you know a pathfinder 2e or like dc20 like we're working on but it's something where like it's really bare bones but maybe you've got some real you know uh, enhancements and upgrades like even just spell progression you can build really kind of anything in here um so again this isn't going to be a full tutorial but this is just to give you a sample i can put images behind here um, I can have it laid out in lots of different ways. You can do like illithid powers if you are following BG3. I mean, there's a ton of stuff that you can do with it, but you know, just those two use cases alone, like you can come in here with zero coding ability and be able to make your own uh, progressions and skill trees. So really cool stuff. The third one I want to talk about that I'm really excited about is this, uh, this sound module called Sonus. So um, it's free, so you can use this right now. And when you, uh, to access it, you come over here to your audio tab and you click this new button, Sonus GDC Sound Browser, and it opens up this uh, fun little browser here. And you'll notice right off the bat, there's 6,500 sounds in here, which is huge to be all free. If you don't know about Sonus, it's something that you can you can license. So what Ripper did was made it so you can search it really easily and you can do some other fun things to it. So for example, let's say that, um, let's go here. Let's go to our river crossing. And let's say we want a sound of a river playing here. And so first let's find that. So let's look up um, Creek. You notice I've got one already favorited, which is kind of right off the bat, something cool you can do as you're browsing through this, you can favorite things, be able to come back to them later. So um, let's listen to some of these. Like that's a pretty good river sound. And as we're looking at them, we can see how long they are. And remember, length of time also equates to how how big they are in size right so we want to stay lower in timestamps unless we want to come in and adjust these somehow see how short this is but it's a nice loop right so it loops over and over again kind of like that and that's nothing having to do with that's creaky i think is what we picked up on so now that we found one that we like let's say it's this one we can do a couple of really interesting things first of all we can change the name of it so we can say uh creek 01 right just to give it something simple and then we can either copy the path to our clipboard and that's going to give us the path to the sonos or the sonus um module but maybe we don't want this to live with the sonus module right maybe there's that modules you know kind of large in size maybe we just want to bring this in or maybe we're a creator and we want to bring the sound into our module and use it so um instead of doing that what i can do is i can come up here and you can see it's it's got a default place to put it i can change that default place i can change it to something else but let's go ahead and use our default place um and this is just within my town's module 
And so we're going to save it there. And let's go ahead and move this now into our sound module. And what it does is it moves it into our sound module. And now let's go ahead and create a, uh, well, I'll show you creating it from scratch. So we'll delete this one and let's drop in a new beacon right here. And let's go, we've got a shortcut to my sounds here. And we'll go into, uh, I think it sends, shows, uh, saves it to sound effects and then Sonus import. And we can see our Creek 01. So we'll select that and we'll give it, leave that volume there. Uh, volume easing's fine. And that sounds good. Let's go ahead and create our ambient audio. And there you have it. Really easy audio effects. Now, some things that you can also do here is, uh, or think some things I recommend is look for certain things like the word loop. Uh, you'll find a bunch of looping audios. And as you listen to these, you'll get some really interesting things that might be good for ambient noises. So these would be things that you'd like fill an entire screen with. You take a, you know, a uh, audio beacon, you fill the whole screen with it, the whole map. Uh, but there's lots of stuff, sci-fi things, fantasy, uh, magical. I mean, here's modern stuff like railroad crossings, just lots and lots of things. Like I guarantee you, you'll be able to find sounds in here that you want to use on your maps and to have them all available uh, with you know, with like ease is, is really phenomenal. You even have things like, let's look up steps. We find these footsteps. If you want to make it sound like your players are traversing a region and they're making sounds of like walking through snow, we just did, Zephyr just did a tutorial on my channel here recently with uh, how to do that. But, you know, puddles, walking through puddles, uh, boots on asphalt. Uh, you know, running through grass. I just love this, that we have all this stuff available and we can pull it out and use it. Keep in mind, you do want to look at the length. Some of these are super long in length, right? So like a minute 15 is probably a lot of um, space to use just for, you know, footsteps. So, you know, keep those in mind uh, when you when you use these. But overall, just a really super useful module and also really great for creators. So if you're a content creator in Foundry, and you want, you know, sounds done easy and you don't always want to just run to sound Bible or freesound.org. This makes it really nice to have it all within foundry and then to move it into your modules in a way that makes it super, super simple. So I hope you enjoyed that today. Super short demo and tutorial for you guys. Let me know if you want more details on any of these in the comments. And in the meantime, a great job, Ripper, for creating a bunch of good stuff for us. If you're interested in the assets that you saw in the video today, you can pick those up. Those are in the latest release here in December of 2024. It's the, the Diorama release. Of course, you get everything else when you subscribe for one month. Um, but this latest stuff is what you've got available now. So with that, thanks, everybody, and have fun making your maps.